Hi. It goes without saying that right now there are people all over the world going through really, really tough times. And equally, it goes without saying that there are others throughout the world who are having conversations with those people who are going through tough times. And if there's one thing that Solution Focus does know about, it's having useful conversations. And so here is something that Solution Focus can perhaps share with others throughout the world who are struggling to know what to say. And here we're going to explore three simple and useful steps that form the basis for a useful conversation. Very often at tough times, people will say, and many of us will have heard people say, I don't know what to say. They're people who are searching for the right words. They want to be useful, but perhaps feel a little awkward in knowing how to respond to people's distress. And those people look, they might be managers, for example, who often find themselves talking with a report. Someone who's finding life difficult, find someone who's distressed, and they're not quite sure what the right words are. There are many people who at these times have volunteered to support others and who may not have a long background in useful conversations. Mentors, perhaps even pastors, even though perhaps they have been more used to having difficult conversations with distressed people, but family members, friends, and many, many more are going to be feeling challenged right now to know what to say. And I think the solution focused approach can offer a template, the basis for a useful conversation. Now, it's not therapy, it's not counseling, it's not coaching, but actually a short conversation can make a difference to people. And what we're looking for is a conversation that can strengthen the person who's distressed and, if we're lucky, can actually build vicarious resistance in the person who's responding. So, three steps. The first step, of course, is acknowledgement. By and large, People don't engage. People, when they're distressed, don't engage in conversations unless they can feel acknowledged. However, there are three points to remember when we're acknowledging. And the first is, look, we shouldn't increase the distress. We shouldn't make the appointment, make the, the problem rather, bigger. I mean, sometimes in order to convince ourselves that we truly are being empathetic, we say things that actually can exaggerate the size of the problem. Oh my goodness, that sounds terrible. I've no idea how you're managing to get through that. I'm sure that if it were me, I wouldn't be managing. As we say those things, the risk is that the person we're talking with, their perception of the issue, actually begins to, it begins to seem bigger in some way. And perhaps they haven't been seeing it as quite as awful as we're implying, and now they have the idea, maybe I should be seeing it as that awful. So the first thing is, of course, acknowledge, it sounds like you've been going through a tough time, but try not to make the problem sound even bigger and more impossible to manage and get through and get by. 
But the second thing is equally that sometimes when we feel distressed to hear what people say, we can sometimes, in trying to be helpful, try to minimize the size of the problem. We can try and argue people out of their distress. We often notice ourselves at those times using but words. I can hear how difficult it is, but you've still got this, but you can still do that, but. And as we start, yes, butting people, what we're doing is actually arguing with their perception of the situation. We're telling them at some level that they're wrong to feel as distressed as they are. Telling people that they're wrong, by and large, doesn't work. Very often at that point, people stop listening to us. Here's another person who doesn't want to hear it like it is. And I guess the third thing we need to remember when we're acknowledging is not to detain people in their distress any longer than they need. And that's a judgment that we all have to make. Human beings can make these judgments. So rather than inviting people to unpack their distress, tell me more about that. So how does that make you feel when that happens? Those sorts of questions that in fact detain people within their distress state. Let's try not to do that. So step one, acknowledgement, but not trying to make it bigger, not trying to deny it, not trying to detain people in their distress. And once people have feel, felt acknowledged, then we're going to move on. And we're going to use the platform of acknowledgement that we built with someone as a platform for managing questions. So now we're going to be asking people about their getting through, their getting by, their coping in the face of the distress. Look, given that it's been that tough, and the given that it's been that tough is the full acknowledgement of the difficulties that people have been facing. Given that it's been that tough, how have you managed to keep yourself going in the face of that? So now we shift people's attention away from their distress to their keeping going, without, of course, denying the difficulty. How have you managed to keep yourself going? What have you been doing that's been good for you and has been helping you to get through this? Alternatively, what have you been drawing on that's helpful, that's helping you to get by? And as soon as we start asking about what people have been drawing on, we're inviting them to think about their skills, their strengths, their resources, their competencies in the face of these difficulties. And when we've, step one, acknowledged, step two, invited people to start thinking about managing, we can build on that shift of emphasis, that shift of focus, by now inviting them into the future. So, look, I can hear that it's been really tough, and there's lots of things you've been doing it sounds as if you have to be helping you to get through and to get by. So how will you know that you're building on this? How will you know that you're finding things just a little bit easier? What might be a sign to you that you're managing and then you have to find the right words? Perhaps the stress of it all, the pain of it all. Just, you know, a little bit more in the way that's just right for you and just right for your life? And what might begin to tell you that you're coming through, that you're coming out of this period of your life? How would you be able to know that you're beginning to get your life back a little? We might want to invite people to give more details. So tell me five things that you might begin to notice that will tell you that you're beginning to get your life 
back a little, that you're coming through this time. So we start with acknowledgement, we move the focus into managing, and from managing, we shift the focus towards the future. And then, of course, we have to say goodbye. And as we say goodbye at the end of the conversation, there are two things that it's really important to manage. And the first is, or to remember, really important to remember. And the first is that we need to trust the person that we're working with, that we're talking with, and we need to trust the process. So at the end of the session, the conversation, we should resist the urge to offer a suggestion or to offer advice. To offer a suggestion or to offer advice is likely to imply that we don't think the person can do it for themselves, that we don't think they've got the resource to handle it themselves, that actually they're not competent to know how to come through this. So why would we want to end a conversation that's intended to strengthen people by implying that the person is not competent. So, no suggestion, no advice. Just a good luck, take care, look after yourself. Those are the sorts of things we can say at the end of these conversations. And if we want to, we could say, look, and if it would be useful to have another chat about this, just let me know, I'll look, I'm always available, if you are, of course. If you felt it would be useful to you just to see how things are going at some point, right? To actually make another meeting time again suggests that we don't believe in the person's competence to manage, their competence to get through, to get by. So there it is, a three part conversation acknowledgement managing and the future and if people hold on to those three core ideas then it's incredibly likely that the conversation will end up being of use so good luck to all of you and um, these might be some ideas that you could share with all those other people out there in the community who perhaps haven't spent quite so much time sitting with people who are distressed, sitting with people who feel overwhelmed, sitting with people in pain and constructing a conversation that can be useful to them and indeed can make a difference.